Until now, this three-jaw puller has been used to remove the final drive outer bearing cage holder from track type tractors. It can apply only about seven tons of force. A new puller assembly and adapter can be used with a hydraulic pump cylinder group and hydraulic service tool attachments. Up to 50 tons of force can be applied. We are going to show you how to remove the outer bearing cage, race, and sprocket from one side of this D7F tractor. We won't show track removal because you can see it done in videotape 26. This presentation will not show you how to do mechanical work of a non-critical nature, such as the simple removal of nuts and bolts. To speed up the operation, not to make it seem easier, we have removed some bolts and loosened others. To remove the bearing, first remove the support cap. The roller frame has been removed and the oil drained from the final drive. Now, pry off the lock. Next, use a four inch socket attached to a torque multiplier to loosen the nut. Brace the handle of the multiplier on a block. Attach a ratchet wrench to the torque multiplier to loosen the nut. Pull the retainer off the dowel pins. Remove the shims. Replace the same number unless an alignment problem must be corrected between track and sprocket. Pull the support off the bearing cage.
Remove the lock clamping bolt. Then take off the lock. Take the upper half of the bearing cage removal tool and attach it behind the ears on the bearing cage. Attach the lower half in the same way and bolt the two halves together. Take the long bolt and put it through the lock hole to hold the tool in place. Tighten all nuts. The next step is to attach the hydraulic ram to the shaft. We need adapters with threads on one end and pinholes on the other. Screw the first one onto the shaft. Allow from 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch between the adapter and the dowels. Then take the new adapter and pin it in place. Take the second adapter, which is just like the first, and thread it onto the new adapter. The pinhole at the end will let us couple the ram to the shaft. A list of parts needed and part numbers can be found in the tool guide. The ram has been fitted with a male adapter. We swing it into position, mate the two adapters, and lock them together with a pin. The cylinder can now be supported by the adapters and shaft. Attach the three puller arms. They connect the ram to the bearing cage removal tool.
put clips on the pins so they do not fall out. You can now use the hydraulic ram to remove the bearing cage. Caution, when you turn on the pump, watch the gauge. Do not exceed 50 tons of force. Turn the valve lever to the ram out position. Turn the motor on and pull the bearing cage off. It's off. The threads on the end of the shaft have been covered with tape to protect them from damage. The outer part of the housing can be loosened and removed first. Protect the cork seal from damage. Now, remove the inner part of the housing. Inspect, remove this seal. The next step is to bend back the lock that keeps the nut from moving. Use a hammer and chisel. A spanner wrench is used to remove the nut. As the nut turns, it forces the bearing cone off the hub.
If there is no final drive failure, you can use tractor power to remove the bearing. Brace the spanner wrench handle against the floor. Caution, make sure the operator has the brake on the opposite track locked and the steering clutch disengaged. This will lock the machine so that it will not move as the sprocket is turned. Have the operator put the tractor in reverse. Slowly back off the nut. When the nut is off the threads, stop the machine. Turn the nut back on. Put a yoke between the nut and the bearing. The yoke is part of the original tooling. Again, Attach the spanner wrench to the nut, brace it against the floor, have the operator put the tractor in reverse, and back off the nut. This time, the bearing will come off all the way. Wear heavy gloves to protect your hands from burrs or sharp edges. Catch the bearing as it comes off the hub. Remove the nut. And take off the lock. Instructions for removing the sprocket can be found in the special instruction. The large threads have been taped to protect them from damage. Remove the dual cone seal from the sprocket. To avoid breakage like this, you can remove it sooner after the bearing cage is removed. Remove the tape from the end of the shaft and take the adapter or collar. It has a chamfer and a slot at the top for the sprocket shaft key. And push it onto the shaft. Thread on one of the adapters we used before.
tighten it against the collar. Now, take the puller arm adapters and bolt them to the sprocket. After all three arms have been installed, push the ram out and pull the sprocket loose from the hub. Remove the puller arrangement from the sprocket. Leave the sprocket shaft adapter in place to protect the threads. Attach a hoist to the sprocket and remove it from the shaft. Inspect the final drive seals. This completes the removal of the sprocket from the D7F tractor. Inspect the splines and make sure they are clean, dry, and that there are no burrs. Inspect the seals. If they are not damaged or excessively worn, wipe the metal surfaces of both seals with a lint-free tissue to remove dirt. Then put clean oil on another tissue and lubricate the faces of both seals. Position the sprocket on the final drive hub. Mesh the splines on the sprocket with the splines on the hub. Push the sprocket on as far as possible by hand. The threaded adapter is still on the end of the cylinder rod. Another adapter is pinned to the cylinder. Place the ring and then the sleeve 
over the hub. Attach the ram to the sprocket shaft adapter with a pin. and seat the sprocket at 60 to 65 tons or the specification given in the service manual. With the tooling removed, measure the distance between the sprocket face and the final drive gear hub shoulder. This dimension is one half inch plus or minus one sixteenth inch. If this dimension is incorrect, it is probably due to worn splines. The final drive hub and or the sprocket should be replaced. Remove the tape from the threads. Install the lock and the sprocket retaining nut. Put the bent ear in the groove. Run the nut on by hand. Then, tighten it as much as possible with the spanner wrench. After the nut has been tightened, bend a tab on the lock to keep the nut from moving. Lock up the sprocket so it is centered on the shaft. Remove the adapters from the shaft. Tape the threads again to protect them from damage. The bearing cannot be put on until it is heated. We will heat this bearing in oil for several hours at a temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit.
push the hot bearing onto the hub. If it does not go on all the way, drive the inner race on with a soft brass drift and a hammer. Keep new seals clean by leaving them in their original packaging until ready for use. Put the duo cone seal in the seal installer with the metal ring inside the collar. Push the seal into position in the sprocket. Take a lint-free tissue and clean the face of the seal. Take another tissue and apply oil to it. Then, oil the face of the seal. This will prevent initial startup seizure. Remove the tape from the shaft. The other half of the new duo cone seal has been installed in the bearing cage. After it is cleaned, apply a film of oil to the seal face. With a sling, Install this part of the bearing cage onto the hub. Note the key on the shaft and the keyway in the cage. Both are at the top. This slot and this dowel in the outer part of the bearing cage must line up with the key and keyway. Slide the outer part of the bearing cage into place, pushing it on as far as it will go. Now, lubricate the inside of the support. Inspect the lip type seal for damage. Then, push the support into place over the bearing cage.
Take the same number of shims you removed and place them on the two dowel pins. Put the retainer on the dowel pins. Use a plastic hammer to tap it into place. Put the nut on the shaft and tighten it by hand. Then use a four inch socket and a ratchet wrench. For final torque, use a torque multiplier. This torque is 1150 pound feet. Place the lock over the nut. Replace the support cap. Use alignment studs or a crow foot bar to line up the bolt holes. With a spanner wrench, tighten the bearing adjusting nut to specify torque. For this machine, the torque is 1,350 pound-feet. We have an 8-foot bar being pushed by a 170-pound man, which gives us 1,360 pound-feet. Remember, this nut is torqued counterclockwise. To help seat the tapered bearing, have the operator run the machine as torque is applied. Install the clamping lock and bolt. Tighten the nut. This tape has shown you only a general procedure. When one bolt or part has been installed, it is presumed that the serviceman will complete the installation of all similar bolts or parts. Also, all moving parts should be oiled or greased as specified when installed. Reassembly and lubrication of this D7F tractor should be completed as described in the service manual. The figures given in this videotape are for purposes of illustration only and are subject to change. Always consult the service manual for correct specifications.
Other models of tractors may require different puller arrangements. For the D8 tractor, a 70-ton puller assembly is used. It bolts directly to the outer bearing support. On machines smaller than the D7 tractor, the three-jaw puller is still used to remove the outer bearing cage. Whenever you use tools, protect your most precious possession. Let a safety lens like this receive the damage inflicted by a flying metal chip rather than the eye behind it. Wear safety glasses.